Arriving here, I realised that I belonged. I discovered a region open to me, full of culture, rich in history, a vibrant community. I came here for a project, but I fell in love with an area embracing its future. I was part of BCP Council's Cutting Edge Smart Place programme. Investors, startups and companies are finding the BCP area the ideal place to learn, to grow and explore together. We are experiencing massive growth, attracting digital leaders from across the globe. Together, we are creating an engine of open innovation to improve people's lives. Rising to today's societal challenges, we are creating jobs, we are building a community. Together, we are building a future that we all want to live in. That's what our Smart Place is about. A privileged, open ecosystem, an open infrastructure, an open community. Innovation, community and co-creation are at the centre of what we do. This drives us. The BCP Smart Place is creating the art of the possible and it is happening now. If you share this vision, this is the place for you. Bournemouth, Christchurch and Paul, the new Smart Place. Welcome to Bournemouth, Christchurch and Poole, the new smart place. First up, our BCP Council Chief Executive, Graham Ferrand, and our Program Manager, Adrian Hale, will outline our core values, our vision and our strategy for making BCP area the most innovative smart place in the UK. Creating a dynamic smart place is at the forefront of our corporate plan. We're creating a 21st century smart place ecosystem that sets us distinctly apart. I'm Graham Farrant, BCP Council's Chief Executive. Bournemouth Christchurch and Paul Council is one of the larger local authorities in the UK, serving a rapidly growing population of 400,000 people. We're set in an outstanding natural environment. We have award-winning beaches, parks, events and an open culture of connected communities. Bournemouth, Christchurch and Paul are such attractive places to live and work and this has helped us to build a world-class and varied sector base in finance, advanced manufacturing, engineering, digital creativity and education. Growth, as we are experiencing, brings an increased demand for council services. Against a backdrop of the current global environment, sustainability is key. We are passionate about leading our communities to a sustainable future. A future where innovation, digital connectivity and collaboration are at the heart of our exciting plans and our thriving place. Leading municipalities recognise they can't create a culture. We're about shaping attitudes and behaviours so that we can lead people towards the culture we want. Our role is about creating the right environment so that culture can grow. The success of the Bournemouth, Christchurch and Paul area means that the prosperity and growth of our communities are brought to the fore. We are taking a holistic, place-based approach. We want to deliver meaningful change by creating digital solutions that improves the lives of our residents, helps with the vibrancy of our communities, and supports the prospects of our local businesses. My name is Adrian Hale and I'm heading up our Smart Place programme here in BCP Council. By really focusing on doing the things that matter to local people, communities and businesses, then it is inevitable that we will generate value. That value benefits the place that we serve, but it will also benefit those technology partners and investors who want to work alongside us. So, what are we doing? We are focusing our efforts on a number of areas. This includes supporting healthcare and social care 
The people that work with our vulnerable adults and children, those who are working with people at risk of suicide, and those who are working with the vulnerable and the homeless as well. We are also seeking to protect the local environment by reducing energy consumption and promoting sustainable transport. And importantly, we will be focusing on increasing productivity and delivering Industry 4.0. We are inviting companies to come and deliver meaningful solutions. We have created a list of challenges and a live smart place testbed in the Lansdowne area of Bournemouth, where companies can come and trial solutions to these challenges. We want to empower businesses to create meaningful solutions based on game-changing technologies such as 5G, IoT, AI, and machine learning. Through our Smart Place Research and Development Consortium, we are providing the opportunity for businesses to work with each other on an open platform to create our future together. Whilst we have significant Smart Place ambitions, those ambitions will never be realised unless we are able to create a financially sustainable Smart Place. That financial sustainability comes as part of promoting leading edge technologies, but importantly, also promoting a leading edge smart place business model. This involves investors, technology companies, and the community sharing the benefits from working together. Our smart place model is being strongly supported by UK government departments. BCP Council's unique smart place approach is attracting the interest of investors and key technology companies. We are developing our Smart Place Investment Prospectus, setting out the case for investment in our area. If any investors would like to know more about this opportunity, then please get in touch with our Smart Place team. By taking a positive, value-generating, place-based approach, we are already attracting UK companies. Due to the innovative digital ecosystem that we are establishing, and the significant attraction of Dorset as an area to do business, we are encouraging international companies to place their UK base in our area. We are extremely fortunate to have dense population centres, incredible countryside and an international airport and port. We are very proud of the BCP area and proud to be creating a real smart place ecosystem. We are opening up our digital infrastructure to encourage creativity from people like yourself, people who seek and develop solutions for the problems of today and tomorrow. Our ecosystem is incredibly diverse, where you can do real things with real end users in an innovative digital ecosystem. It is open, an open network, a network of our own, where our means for the people, with the people. Our strategy is about improving life for all our communities. This is how we're creating jobs and making things happen. We are open to business. We can offer companies wishing to work in our area a platform where they can test and trial solutions in a highly innovative digital environment. An open development process with key stakeholders to create use cases and potential solutions. The ability to host companies willing to challenge and evolve their solutions and their approach to the digital market in one of the UK's fastest growing digital economies. We are enabling, not creating, meaningful, real-world challenges that deliver genuine legacy value, that shows the way rather than simply showcasing. One of our key goals is to develop digital solutions that can be traded across the world, having grown them here on our fertile ground. BCP Council has hit upon the blueprint for success. Digital innovation is a significant engine for growth and economic prosperity. And we would like you to be part of our success story. We are implementing a cutting edge, beyond state-of-the-art digital ecosystem. This gives businesses that elect to make their home here a serious competitive advantage. 
we are deploying a highly innovative 5G network open to your business to come and develop and trial your products. We are connecting places with gigabit fibre. We are looking at a variety of solutions on how and where we should be storing data securely. We will be developing our own smart place data platform where data can be shared securely and where data analytics including AI and machine learning can be utilised. Importantly, our open smart place platform enables businesses like yours to come and create new place-based services applications that makes people's lives better. In summary, we are accelerating innovation in our open smart place environment. And we do this always remembering that genuine value is only generated when we focus upon delivering solutions that benefit our people, our communities and our businesses. We welcome companies both here and overseas to make a real and lasting difference. Join us on our exciting Smart Place journey. BCP Council is a modern, accessible, accountable council committed to providing effective leadership, leading our vibrant communities to an outstanding quality of life where everyone plays an active role. The well-being and prosperity of our place and the people within it are entrusted to us, a responsibility we embrace with passion and with pride. We are passionate about our area being a dynamic place and that's why we're investing in our Smart Place programme. We want to embrace new companies, ideas and solutions and welcome you into our exciting ecosystem. Whether you are a global enterprise, an SME or a startup, there's no better place to call home than Bournemouth, Christchurch and Paul, the dynamic heart of the South. By being located in our area, you would have access to the UK's largest regional cyber security cluster, a large SME ecosystem base, a growing centre of excellence for visual effects and a major contributor to the UK's world-renowned VFX capability and the National Centre for Computer Animation. To funding, innovation opportunities and networks via our Research and Development Consortium and other providers such as Innovate UK and Enterprising Europe Network. To a highly skilled workforce and access to talent. Access to a digital innovation hub and virtual learning platform for technical upskilling of staff. With three universities, innovative and business focused college, the BCP area is producing and retaining the talent our businesses need. The Bournemouth, Christchurch and Paul area is experiencing rapid growth, twice as fast as the average in the last 10 years and on track to be in the top five cities for growth in the next 20 years. BCP is in the top five locations for digital leaders to locate in. It's a place where people like yourselves choose to be. They're here to learn, to grow, to explore and to work and relax, to contribute and be supported, to innovate and to have fun. We are a place brimming with prosperity, prospects and positivity. Whatever your requirements, whether it's access to supply chains, networks, specific financial support, identification of property, advice on skills and recruitment and access to talent, our talented officers in the Smart Places team can act as the access point for you and your business. Collaboration is the centre of what we do. This drives us. If you share the vision of an open culture and co-creation, then this is the place for you. Our area is open for business, open for growth, open for innovation. Bournemouth, Christchurch and Paul, the new smart place. You have heard about our open, citizen-centric approach. This openness is key for innovation. The Research and Development Consortium is creating the future together. This is a great network for new arrivals to find a place in our ecosystem. An ecosystem based on co-creation, built on an open infrastructure. Let's listen to a few of the companies that are calling the BCP area their home and the future.
to what extent is openness a key factor? I think that BCP are actually going beyond the call of duty. I think that they are being flexible. I think that they are enabling uh, the partner. I think they're actually very, very engaging and they're listening more importantly. You know, if we're going back to them and saying, or questioning why they're doing certain things, you know, we're getting the responses, but they're giving us the ability to be able to go back and explain to them a, a different solution. My name's Anita Mystery and I'm from Zeta. We're constantly being kept up to date with BCP. We're constantly uh, understanding different milestones that are being reached. The collaboration part is, and the openness of BCP is really, really important. BCP are listening and they are learning. They're working with a very unique set of SMEs and innovators in, in the borough in enabling their smart place vision. MMI CEO, IoT Solutions Group. By actually working collectively together, we are going to achieve far greater results than if everybody was working in isolation. My name is Arun Kar, co-founder, Expert Nest. The Smart Place program consists of multiple vendors and multiple R&D partners developing multiple solutions with different functionality. We are actively working alongside, um, uh, to be blunt, p potential competitors. So Nick Allott, the CEO of Inquiring Minds. Certainly if you want to engage some of the, the, the newer, the younger and the smaller in innovative companies, for them to have any um, uh, chance of competing against sort of like the larger incumbent suppliers, they need to work collectively um, in, in this open collaborative manner. I think that really what we need is a, um, a term that's open experimentation which means that several parties can come in and um, experiment. We believe in open innovation. We can co-develop solutions together with different partners and that's exactly what's happening in the Smart Place program. Why is a clear infrastructure strategy important? By having a local authority such as BCP that are actually engaged in building network infrastructure, that enables companies to actually be able to deploy devices and actually fulfil use cases in a borough. There are so many that have ambition, um, but without having built a network, having installed gateways, having given up their assets to enable the network providers to do that. I think it's also very important to have an open standard. If we don't have the open standard, then you know everybody's going to go off and work in silos, etc., and not bring that whole project together. So I think by having the interoperability between people and technology and the standards and the framework on BCP and what we're trying to achieve, I think that's probably the most crucial part of this project. Having uh, an open attitude with regards to infrastructure is incredibly important. It makes such a difference. From a development viewpoint, I could say it's good to have the infrastructure ready in place before the start of the project. Having an infrastructure strategy when you're trying to deliver an innovative program is vitally important. If you don't have the infrastructure and you don't have the network in place, then nothing is going to work innovatively, whether you want it to or not. Without the open infrastructure approach, this would simply become another infrastructure project that connects departments. I'm Mike Morris, I work for Extension. We need the access infrastructure, we need 5G, we need whatever it is that the end user requires in order to give us that information. For projects which are developed in simulators, like any innovation projects which are developed in simulators, there is a significant risk of additional cost. There are many, many councils in this country that have lots of big ideas, but without the network and the infrastructure in place, their proof of concepts and their trials are never going to work. The approach BCP are taking is that they understand that if, if we invest uh, carefully and intelligently into the security infrastructure, it becomes an enabler. It provides the confidence to actually unlock the data from the various silos uh, and then to build sort of like the, the higher value um, um, uh, applications and services on top. Having access to secure data is the entry to the kingdom of 
driving innovation through technology. It's a question of sort of like future growth and innovation. If the project is connecting to real world data and if it's more than one project, uh, infrastructure is critical. If done correctly, the infrastructure should just be a base layer that allows the communication of data and information into the core and then for distribution. The local authority plays for me three key roles. I'm Nick Giles, Chief Product Officer with DAISY. One is about the digital infrastructure that's available locally. The second is about the evangelism of the local ecosystem to commercial providers, bringing in infrastructure for commercial networks. And then the third piece is around becoming that catalyst for an ecosystem of solution partners, end users, and, and a whole community of uh, like-minded companies that can work together. BCP are very revolutionary in their thought process and actually by working with innovative partners and an R&D consortium, their whole challenge platform has the opportunity to be hugely successful. We're not uh, creating an academic exercise here, but creating services that are going to have real value towards the citizens. So these challenges need to be grounded in the real world requirements of the council workers, but also the real world requirements of the people living in the community. With any sort of innovation, it's critical to reduce the cycle time, the amount of time uh, between creating a feature or a service and testing it and validating it in market. BCP's challenge platform allows you to work with real world challenges and real world end users. How important is that to you as you develop your solution? Having the opportunity to work with real world challenges and real end users is vitally important. It actually gives us the chance to actually see the benefits of the technology that we're deploying in a borough. Okay. With the challenge programme and the community of end users that we have within BCP, we're able to very quickly test and validate our solutions uh, to understand what works, but actually more importantly to understand what doesn't work so we can fail early and move on. And that's what the community gives us. What is the role of a local authority? The role of the local authority is to be instrumental and in providing a proper environment for innovation. One element I would say that the local authority can really contribute is to actually simplify the access to this. If you embrace all of the, the opportunities and all the communications networks that are out there, you're going to enable the SMEs and the innovators in your region to actually deliver you a broad spectrum of use cases, a broad spectrum of, of sensors that are actually going to be able to fit the purpose that they're needed for. Our customers are solution providers, system integrators, um, and it's really helpful for us that they're on our doorstep. There's an ecosystem uh, nurtured by BCP Council, which means we can tap into that ecosystem of solution providers, of end users, and, and try things out very quickly. Being part of an R&D consortium and a smart place team like BCP, it means that innovators are able to share ideas, share experience, and actually the council, BCP in this case, are actually able to make the best use of all those skill sets. What would you say to another company that's considering setting up in BCP in the area? Definitely, BCP gives uh, a range of benefits for local companies to, to work in this area. It will enable you as an SME to have the opportunity to trial and test your technology. I'd recommend other companies to test their solution here. BCP is the only smart city programme that I've seen where they've started with the citizen and worked back to the infrastructure. So without hesitation, we can say yes. We can recommend other companies to land in the BCP area to test their solution. As a, local, a locally based company, I would absolutely recommend that companies come to the, the BCP borough to work. Um, working with a council that has such uh, an inclusive and innovative attitude is, is massively refreshing. We are creating a great future together. Next, we will hear UK government perspectives on funding and supporting digital transformation within the Smart Cities Agenda. We will also explore how the Catalan government is supporting the foreign direct investment into the UK and how PCP Council is enabling this investment. Good afternoon. Please can everyone introduce yourselves and the organisation that you work for and give a little bit of an overview as to what it is that you do. 
Thank you, Kate, and good afternoon. I'm Sheldon Ferguson. I am the policy lead for the Local Digital Collaboration Unit uh, in uh, the department called the Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government. Hi, I'm Tony Scales. I'm the head of programme development at the 5G Test Beds and Trials programme in the Department for Digital, Culture, Media and Sport in the UK government. Uh, good afternoon, Kate. It's a pleasure to be here. My uh, name is uh, Oscar Marti. I'm the director of Catalonia Training Investment, which is a trade promotion agency of the government of Catalonia. I'm uh, from the office in uh, London, which covers the UK and Ireland. And our role is to support Catalan companies in uh, expanding in overseas markets, as well as uh, innovation, uh, trade promotion, investment tasks. And I'm Councillor Phil Broadhead. I'm the deputy leader of BCP Council, uh, also the cabinet member for Regeneration. Uh, eco uh, economic growth and strategic planning. It'd be good to understand everyone's strategies um, around funding. So initially, Sheldon, what is your strategy around funding? Uh, what is it that you want to fund within digital transformation projects? Is it the infrastructure side of things or is it that more of the services? We're very much around services, but our strategy is based around a document we published a little over two years ago called the Digital Declaration. This is a shared vision for the future of local services, and there is a range of commitments around the declaration. These include designing services around the needs of people, so it's very much about end users and use of user research. We also want better access to data, and we also want genuine uh, digital leadership that creates the conditions for genuine transformation in local government. Well, there, there are two clues, I guess, to our, uh, our strategy. That One is what, uh, the source of our funding, um, which is the National Productivity Infrastructure Fund, or investment fund um, that was set up in 2016 with a billion pounds of funding to, to fund infrastructure for the UK to work out the business case for investment in 5G, to lead the R&D in the UK's uh, 5G services and for 5G technology. Um, and the third part is, is to establish the ecosystem of 5G players in the UK but the, the technology on its own doesn't make a business case. So you need you need both the services and the infrastructure to, to create the, the, the market and the value for it. Um, and that creates stories um, which are absolutely crucial to people understanding what 5G is capable of and where, the, where people might want to use it. So we've moved a long way, um, but, but it is about the investment strategy is all about um, bringing those two things together, the services and the infrastructure to create the business case for, for both to be um, uh, vibrant and useful in the future. We, um, if we come, for example, the, to speak about smart cities, uh, we um, this is the one sector that we look, uh, we pay uh, lots of attention to it. A few years ago, we started like uh, mapping lots of detail, and then starting to identify the whole value chain of solutions, uh, services, the products that will uh, help cities in this uh, all-encompassing sector. We can say of uh, smart cities. And uh, what, uh, what we did then was to identify um, a total of about 450 uh, Catalan companies um, working in this sector. And uh, it's actually how we began to, to get in touch with uh, a council such as BCP with uh, very interesting programs for smart cities, uh, which are actually a fantastic channel to go into the UK for the field of smart cities in this particular case. Thank you, Oscar. And Phil, um, what is the overall strategy of BCP's Smart Place programme? Well, our, our overall strategy is to try and really take it to the next level. Tony talked earlier on about the fact that technology in and of itself, in isolation, doesn't achieve anything. Obviously, we're working very closely with all the different aspects of government uh, to demonstrate that we are a place that's uh, ideal to be a test bed for a number of these things. So in particular, in our central Bournemouth area, we've got our, our 5G uh, test bed in Lansdowne, which was only really possible because we'd already made significant infrastructure investments in, fi in fibre optics to start with. So local authorities play a, a really vital role in being able to basically put all of these different pieces of the jigsaw together. To our next question, um, Sheldon, can you tell us about what your future plans are for launching new funding calls and what is your potential, you know, your future vision? Is it going to be different to what we've seen in the past? And I think the priority of our government right now is to try and protect lives, uh, the economy and jobs. So as a consequence of this, our Chancellor of Exchequer announced a one-year funding settlement uh, on that basis and he intends to have announce the details of that settlement uh, on the 25th of November. So we'll have to see what comes out of this funding settlement before we can actually uh, set out our long-term strategy for our projects. But in the medium term now, 
our priority really is to get some of these projects to completion and offer some live services. We're particularly excited about uh, two of our projects, which are coming up shortly. One is on uh, back office planning projects, which is helping council officers smooth out the planning process itself. Uh, one of the things that is as minimum is we must have three councils working together on a project, and preferably a diverse range of councils. This means the solution we develop can actually be scaled and replicated very quickly because it has the same commonalities across for all councils, basically. Thank you, Sheldon. And to Tony, um, could you tell us about DCMS's um, future plans, uh, funding calls, themes that we may see coming forward in future years and to how the vision may differ moving forward? Yeah, Kate. Um, so we are kind of at a, quite a strong pivot point in our programme. We've now allocated all of the £200 million that we originally um, set up in the fund um, to projects. We've done that through a series of five competitions. Um, and at the end of it, by the time we finished, we will have run something in the region of 40 projects. So um, not all of those will establish separate test beds. Some of them are working on the um, more trials on the same test beds or expanding the, the functionality and capability of those, those test beds that were originally designed. If you want to go and have a look, um, there's a, 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 our ecosystem builder is called um, uk5g.org. Um, it's free to join. I strongly encourage anybody who's listening to go and join in um, and you'll be able to get a lot more detail on what all those projects are about and where they've got to. Um, so although we've allocated the funds in terms of grants uh, to, to, those, to those projects, many of them are still looking for partners um, and many of them have still got um, uh, fun, you know, funding calls they're making themselves to say we, you know, the, the industry won't stand still and 5G has got a long way to go in its journey. Um, so we see a lot more research and development needed um, as significant work with a lot of other places, including Bournemouth, as you know, um, is, a, is a place that we spend time and um, work listening to what you're doing as well as, as, as uh, sharing the, the learnings from what we're about. To Oscar now, um, could you tell us, um, touching on what Tony just mentioned around foreign direct investment, can you tell us around what your initiatives are around attracting companies to the UK from Catalonia? So in this regard, uh, what uh, we're doing is precisely this, is like trying to strengthen our ties with uh, the key players. Uh, and um, I'm talking about the UK regions, I'm talking about the local uh, um, uh, entrepreneurship, uh, enter enterprise partnerships, I'm speaking about the councils, uh, the EN network that, uh, that keeps going on, the chambers of commerce. So everything that can be done at the local level with the partners that know exactly what's going on around them and that can uh, help to multiply the effect and like uh, transmit information to companies uh, in terms of uh, who are the potential partners and what are the actual opportunities. Uh, all this is going to help us a lot in terms of like uh, telling the Catalan companies like here's opportunity, these are the people you have to speak to. And uh, we are also going to be like looking at the specific opportunities that for us uh, in the past few years, we've seen that uh, have uh, differentiated the UK market uh, and likely in terms of uh, openness and in terms of uh, the early adoption of technologies, uh, we, uh, we identify uh, all the opportunities that are going on through the SBRI program in the UK. Um, and uh, that's been also an example with, uh, with the BCP Council, uh, in which we already have cattle and companies looking at specific opportunities to work with the council. It's, it's been working, but definitely we always need to adjust the strategy uh, within the framework of, uh, of the new developments. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you. And Phil, to you, um, what are BCP Council's plans to promote the digital economy? We've got a very good track record so far about um, about leading on this, and uh, we've already got a, a very good digital and creative economy already. Um, we've been top of the league tables for the, the fastest growing uh, creative and digital economy for a number of years. It's it's a bit deeper than just having a good digital sector. It's the reason we've got all these people here. It's drawing all of those things together, be it funding, be it new investment. What what. What role does the local authority play, not just in bringing people together, but demonstrating what that actually means on the ground as well? So actually, we've got a very good opportunity and a big piece of work that we're doing about actually demonstrating and leading from the front. Um, so, you know, Oscar mentioned that uh, there's obviously interest from Catalonian companies. We've got a couple of Catalonian companies at the moment that we're working very closely with and we're putting in a bid to Innovate UK um, around things like um, 
real-time vehicle occupancy, bus occupancy, uh, traffic management policy. They sound very dry things, but if you if you harness the, the 5G um, uh, testbed that we've got, uh, you bring in all of those outside companies, and then you actually see real results that make real differences for people on the ground, suddenly people start to understand why that makes a difference. So we're trying to bring all those pieces together. We're trying to bring uh, and work closely with government departments and outside to demonstrate this can make a real difference for real people. Obviously, within, you know, we're taking part in the Smart Cities Expo. There's going to be lots of people talking, holding debates about post-COVID. Obviously, unique to the UK, we've obviously got the post-Brexit debate as well. So collectively, together, um, we need to understand how we can use the digital sector to aid in the recovery of the UK economy. So initially to yourself, Sheldon, um, are the priorities of the MHCLG changing as a result of um, COVID and Brexit? Um, are we going to see things done quite differently? No, I'd say we're not going to change our approach. I think it's what's happened with Brexit and COVID has just made our approach more important and more vital than ever. I want to see an embed agile working and we want to see the embedding of digital leadership and we need to see services that can be spun up quickly and be implemented to support uh, communities. I mean, look at the beach checkup. You've spun that up so quickly. I mean, that's just, just uh, down to having talented people in, uh, with uh, working in agile communities saying, yeah, we can develop solutions. We also want to see a growth in the marketplace itself. And also we want to see new players come in. That's why we're very keen to see modular systems. On the COVID-19, we developed a special funding round, which is to help councils prepare against COVID-19 and others have come out of COVID-19 and support their communities. Thanks, Sheldon. And Tony, if you could answer the same question, please. I think I'd agree with, with Sheldon. Look, we're not, it, it doesn't require, from our perspective, a change in the strategy because I think the strategy was already um, cast with, with a great deal of flexibility in it, but, but the core themes are, are still there. What's changed is the context. I think that if you ask people, I always ask people when I go to smart, smart X conferences, whether they're smart places, smart cities, smart communities, um, what would it fit, what does it feel like to live in a smart place? You know, it's, it's a place where um, you feel like the community that you're living in is, is one that you can engage with, um, that, that understands your needs as an individual and, um, and, and in terms of the businesses and um, parts of that community that you want to engage with, um, that it treats you as an individual, um, it knows who you are, the systems are integrated um, so that you don't have to keep on logging on to different systems to access services, they come to you, feel safe, it feels economically vibrant, it feels clean, um, it's, it's, um, you know, it's a good place to live and, and I think that you know, we, we, we're increasingly setting our standards higher and higher. I think that we're, we're going to see um, as a result of COVID um, a, a lot more of our services being delivered over, over um, mobile and over broadband services. So I think there's a huge opportunity, series of opportunities around that. Uh, and and with, with Brexit, you know, again, I'll, I'll say it again, you know, the UK is open for business. We're, we're open to export and we're open to foreign direct investment. We're, we're open to um, uh, overseas companies working in the UK to help us create our, 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 better, our better economy built back um, post-COVID, post-Brexit. Thank you, Tony. Moving on to um, Oscar, your perspective is obviously quite different. Can you tell us how companies' objectives may be changing as a result of the pandemic? What are companies from Catalonia looking for in an area when they think about landing in the UK? And has the COVID-19 pandemic changed the objectives of companies wanting to locate in the UK? Well, clearly, uh, COVID-19 has affected lots of companies. Um, some of them are affected than others. But uh, in general, if we look at the, num at the numbers in terms of exports, in terms of investment, uh, the numbers are down. And you were asking me, like, what we'd like to see in companies uh, in, uh, in particular when they come into the UK. Uh, we want to see companies that are bringing something different. Um, a typical conversation with a company, uh, something that comes up is like how competitive the market is in the UK. It's a very mature market in many ways, uh, and everyone is doing business here. And that's usually what I say that's a good thing. Thank you, Oscar. 
And um, to Phil, can you tell us about uh, what BCP Council uh, are doing regarding any strategies or activities to attract investment from the uh, European Union in the post-COVID and post-Brexit world? Well, we've got a number of different streams, as we've talked about, um, of, of, of how we can demonstrate that we are the place to do business. And, and the very fact that we're here at, at this conference today, internationally presenting and internationally recognised, I think, uh, go some way to, to the level of ambition that we've got. Um, but, but, you know, following on from the, um, uh, the, the comments of, of other speakers here, I think it's about um, accepting the world that we're in and, and looking at it and, and not just finding the challenges, but finding the, the opportunities as well and, and demonstrating what that means on the ground. And, you know, agreeing with, with some of the previous speakers, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a natural optimist, but I think one of the things that the COVID crisis has clearly demonstrated is uh, the, the real impact on real people of some of these smart city and smart digital solutions. I think one of the other um, things, and again, I'm, I'm going to be a, a shameless cheerleader for the Bournemouth Christchurch and Pool area here, but it is my job, is, is picking up on the points that Tony and Oscar made in particular um, about how the, the post-COVID world in particular and that, that new reliance on digital um, technology it enables uh, the geographically... Ge ge the geographicality of the workforce to change dramatically and, and, and all of those things, which is why government obviously clearly uh, sees that record of delivery, hence why they keep investing in us. That's all really important. But when it comes down to it, as Oscar said, it's lifestyle as well. And it's that natural environment. And, and actually having all of those things together is, is great. But you've got to link that with an area that people want to be in and want to actually live in as well. And I think that's a, a, a particular benefit that we've got in the Bournemouth Christchurch and Pool area. Thank you very much for your time that you have given us today uh, and hopefully our viewers have found that very insightful. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. What well, great perspectives from all of our speakers this afternoon. It is really interesting and assuring to hear that government departments are advocating bringing together services and infrastructures for a vibrant future in the UK. Companies, investors and startups are building a future on our open network to solve society's problems. This is an exciting vision for how a smart place could and should be built. Councillor Philip Broadhead, Deputy Leader of BCP Council. The world is changing. We are focused on the complex and growing demands of our community. Technology is equally changing. For Bournemouth, Christchurch and Poole, it's not about technology for technology's sake, but about how we can embrace technology to serve our community. What we are hearing today, what we are seeing, is that the scope for community and economic growth is massive. Our open ecosystem is enabling creative, impactful technologies to grow an open network to promote economic opportunity and quality of life for our citizens. Many people you've heard from today have bought into the Smart Place programme and the lifestyle and opportunities of the BCP area. It's a special kind of place. Three distinct towns, one place, a coastline of opportunity, a place where heritage meets innovation with plentiful green spaces, a sunny southern climate, unrivaled seafront spaces and active, healthy lifestyles. This is a place brimming with prosperity, prospects, positivity and pride. This is where people choose to be. They're here to learn, to grow, to explore, to work and relax, to contribute and be supported, to innovate and to have fun. People here are flourishing. People here are happy. We have the ideal opportunity for investors, startups and companies to learn together, to work together and to grow together. That's what our smart place is about. A privileged open ecosystem, an open infrastructure and an open community. We are experiencing growth, attracting digital leaders from across the globe. Together, we are creating our future on an open technology platform to improve people's lives. Collaboration is at the centre of what we do. It drives us. If you share the vision of an open culture and co-creation, you want to create the art of the possible, then this is the place for you. Bournemouth, 
Christchurch and Poole. The new smart place.